Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about maps, and maps are one of my most favorite things. In fact, maps are probably the reason I got into making information graphics and infographics. Um, I could definitely trace back my love of maps to being a kid and playing Legend of Zelda and reading The Lord of the Rings and uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons with my friends where we had to create our own maps and ways to visualize these made-up universes. And uh, I can even remember as a, as, a, as a kid in fourth grade when um, Germany reunified. It was no longer East and West Germany, which had been on the map forever. Um, and then all of a sudden it was one country. So I remember my, my school having to get all new maps just so we could sort of have that up-to-date information. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you guys about how we can use uh, SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic Maps, and where we can get those and how we can make them happen inside of our projects when maps are, are required. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull open a browser and we're going to go to Wikimedia Commons. Okay, and here's Wikimedia Commons. And what I usually search for is, this is the map we're going to use, by the way. This is a Miller cylindrical projection. But when I am searching in Google, what I like to look for are blank SVG maps. So I just go right to Google and I say blank SVG maps. All right, as you can see, here it is. All right, Wiki, Wikipedia is pulling this up as well, but Wikimedia is really where we want to go. Okay, and I've already got that pulled up here. And if we back up here, you can see that you've got a whole host of maps that you can choose from. Okay, and they all have the file suffix of SVG. And again, that stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. Now, we're going to use these just for a still infographic, but SVGs, in a later tutorial, we'll talk about how they can work for interactive infographics. This is, this is something that's interesting. It's an old technology, but is really going towards the future. So you look through here and you see you've got all types of maps that are color, black and white, um, some have transparent backgrounds, and then even some describe the world in different ways. Um, now, the most common kind of map is something called a cylindrical map, right? In this case, we're going to use the Miller, the Miller projection, Miller cylindrical projection map, okay? Now, the reason I like this is because it's something that we're used to, right? If you can sort of think back to social studies class when the teacher would pull down the map or in the case of today would show you it on a computer, this is what you would see, right? Where the United States sort of has this like straight line border at the top and um, Greenland is sort of smushed and things start to look like they're, they're curving a little bit at the top, right? Now, if you can imagine, this would be wrapped in a cylinder around a globe. Really the most accurate way to see the world is through a globe, but um, because we're using two-dimensional materials, this map, um, in my opinion, is one of the best because it's the most common and recognizable. So if we scroll down here, you'll see that there's a little bit of a, there's a link here. It says World Map, Miller Cylindrical Projection, blank SVG, and that's what we want to download. So I'm using Chrome, so I'm going to do Control click on my Mac, and I'm going to do Save Link As. Okay, and then what this is going to do is this is going to save this to um, the location of where we're going to work. So I'm going to make a new folder for today, Maps 101, and then we're going to save this document there. Okay, so I've now downloaded it, and I can now open this inside of Illustrator. So I'm going to go File, Open, and I'm going to look for Maps 101 and then world map SVG. Okay, so because we are using a scalable vector graphic, it's native to Illustrator because it's vector. So we're going to open that. It takes a second here. All right, and here we go. We have now a world map um, that is vector, right? So we can zoom super close on it. We can see, yep, it's got fill and stroke. I can see all the paths there. Now, the wonderful thing about Wikimedia Commons is that these uh, maps have borders assigned to them. Okay, so if I use the, the uh, black arrow, the object selection tool, so you can see right here, I chose the United States, and it's actually showing me all United States territories, okay, that at least are visible on the map. Notice that Puerto Rico might be a little too small here um, to see. But you can even see here are some of the Alaskan islands coming over the way. We're not seeing any of the uh, islands in the the Pacific here, but I guess it's, you know, 
it's sort of identifying major territories. And you can even do the same thing for like the UK. Well, not that accurate. Let me take that back. Um, it's not showing every single piece of um, location. So this map is not the most accurate, I'll have to say. But there are ones on there that really are accurate. So if I were to click on the UK or something like that, it would show all of the islands and territories and countries that are currently in the hands um, of the United Kingdom. Okay. But what I do love is that all the countries are broken up into separate pieces, and you really can identify specific nations, which is fantastic. Okay. And this is really what it is that you want to be doing. Okay. So um, what we're going to sort of do first is we're just going to play around with some of the basic things that are going on inside this map. And this is a world map. So as you can see, I can very easily just do a select all. The whole world is selected. And I have control over um, the fill and the stroke. So there's multiple things going on here, like Antarctica is a different color gray. And there are different um, types of outlines and things on what we have. So I think what I'll do first is I'm going to use the white arrow. I'm just going to strip away the background Okay, so I don't, because I don't need that. I'm going to want to customize these shapes and really, you know, handle this on my own as a designer. So this is the foundation. This is the building block for what it is we're going to be working with. And also, let me do another select all. I can take off the stroke. And you can see the world becomes sort of one united thing. You can see, obviously, the, the trace spaces in between the different nations. But what I can do now is I can come in here and let's grab the United States and I can give the United States a color, okay, compared to um, everything else. So instantly, I have the ability to pick out um, specific nations and show them as being a part of um, one particular thing by color coding them, okay? So let's just say right here, we're sort of talking about the United Kingdom and the United States, right, as being allies. Let's add France in there, okay? Now, of course, there's a lot more allies in this group um, but if I worked off of a data set, I could just instantly identify, you know, six or seven nations or whatever we're looking at, like the G8, the G20, and group those together. And in um, a second, with this SVG map, I can really just show off what it is um, that I'm trying to say. So this is pretty cool. It's a very sort of simple way to get started with maps. Now, we're going to expand this in another tutorial coming up right now, and we're going to make um, a United States map. So stick around. We're going to come back and keep working with maps.